So Chris Paul is officially a Golden State Warrior. He was loosely and lightly introduced by the team yesterday, had an interview set up with some media members, but I thought this was pretty interesting. Like, they didn't have an actual introductory press conference for Chris Paul. They had him pose with this jersey here. He's going to be rocking number three. Then he took a couple of questions from some media members, but it wasn't a huge ordeal by any means for a guy who is soon to be a basketball Hall of Famer, but CP3 going to stay in the number three, taking that number from the former Warrior in Jordan Poole, who was dodging questions about his Warriors tenure, as well as talking to Draymond Green over the weekend, which got very, very awkward and very, very interesting. So if you're excited for Chris Paul to be in Golden State, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. But I do know there's a lot of you who don't like the fit of CP3 to San Francisco. So if you don't like it, I want you to comment why. As always, we appreciate your feedback. So with Chris Paul talking to the media yesterday, he was pressed at one point and asked if him and Steve Kerr have had a conversation about if he'll come off the bench or if he'll be in that starting five. And it got a little bit loosely feisty to a certain degree because Chris Paul didn't really answer the question directly and some people thought he got a little bit snippy with the media which I thought was a little bit of an overreaction but what do you think see for yourself you coaching he asked the reporter well I don't know what the situation is going to be yet I think that'll be for us to figure out once we get going it'll be a conversation for us when training camp starts, he also said that like when you reach out to Steve Kerr, you don't have that conversation right away of, am I going to start, Steve? Am I coming in off the bench? So I thought a lot of people overreacted to this on Twitter, which is just classic social media these days. There are so many overreactions every single day. Chris Paul might start some for Golden State. He might come in off the bench. And I thought that he was kind of joking around a little bit with the reporter who asked him that. He didn't seem all too serious or come across as very aggressive, but it was certainly an interesting exchange there from CP3. In other Chris Paul news here, according to Anthony Slater of The Athletic, Chris Paul, quote, vocal in the Warriors' pursuit of of Dario Saric and NBA free agency, which we talked about really early on Saturday morning. That video approaching 50,000 views. Appreciate everybody who watched that and subscribed to the show. Here is that report from Anthony Slater here. I'm told Chris Paul was a vocal fan of the Warriors adding Saric in recent days. The duo comfortable with each other and should form the backbone of the Warriors' new older and more methodical second unit. And I think that CP3 is going to be a really, really good backup as well as Dario Saric. And in speaking with Saric here, we've talked about him plenty on the program. And it feels good to be right because we pinned Saric as a good fit for Golden State. The organization saw that as well. And I think that he's going to fit in really nicely with the Golden State Warriors. Why Dario Saric fits really nicely with Golden State Last year, he averaged 1.32 points per possession in pick and pops and pick and rolls. What do the Warriors like to do offensively? A lot of pick and pops and a lot of pick and rolls. He also had a 57% effective field goal percentage on catch and shoot jumpers. He can stretch the floor, knock down the three, and as a big, providing floor stretching ability that's really important for how Golden State likes to maneuver on the offensive end of the floor. When he does attack the rim, Sharge does a good job of finishing with floaters, hooks, and overall being tough on the low block. He is a great passer for a big. A couple of times here on the program, I have compared him to Draymond Green with the ability to pass from the high post and have really good vision as a big, whether it be by himself in that high post coming off the pick and roll or whatever. Very good vision there. You can tell he has those European smarts. And lastly, Dario Scharch is going to provide a lot of floor spacing to open up some driving lanes for Steph Curry and others, CP3 included in that, but also for other guys to get open looks all around that three-point arc. And then from there, you look down low into the paint for some of those backdoor cutters and that off-ball action. Dario Scharch can't wait to see how he fits on this team. What's also interesting is that every time the Warriors have won a championship, four rings with this crew, they've had a European center 
on the roster. Sharich is the latest. Fifth European center, five rings maybe? We will certainly see. Sharich is also an underrated defensive player. So when he was on the floor last year, players drove to the rim 5.86% less. So that's very, very interesting. When he's on the floor, guys don't like to drive to the cup as much as when he's off the floor. So the defensive ability there, somewhat underrated for a player, gets a lot of credit for being more of an offensive big. Now before we continue to move forward here, make sure you subscribe to the show because when the Golden State Warriors signed Dario Saric, I saw a Slack and a message from producer Jack. It was like 7 a.m., 7.30 in the morning. I got up, looked at my phone, and I'm like, what awful timing. We're still going to do a video, and it worked out to our benefit. And anytime the Warriors make a move, we will keep you in the know with all of the moves that the Warriors do make. Hit that sub button. As you can see here, we're closing in on 60,000 subscribers. You want to close in on this deal? Warriors t-shirt combo. You can get your hands on it. Chatsports.com slash dubs combo. You can look, look fresh, rep your team, and save money. Check, check, check. Sounds great to me. It could sound great to you. Chatsports.com slash dubs combo. One more time, that link available in the comments section and in the description of this video. So I want to round out the show with this. Really just do a rumors roundup for Golden State. Take a look at some of the players that they're looking at and could sign in free agency. But before we do that, how about an update on Trace, Trace Jackson Davis, one of the Warriors draft picks from the 2023 NBA draft, who is yet to play in the summer league, but according to reports, could make his debut this week. This coming from Jacob Rubin, the Warriors summer league coach, Trace Jackson Davis, getting some work done on the side with Seth Cooper. I think it's getting better. It's just a day-to-day -day thing. He has a sore hamstring, so we're just going to bring him along. If he plays in the summer league, great. We definitely miss him out there. If not, then he'll be ready for us for the regular season. Just a day-by-day -day thing. He's looking better for sure. And it's unfortunate for us as fans because a reason I really like the NBA Summer League, you get to have an opportunity to see what these players can bring to the floor. Like Lester Quinn owns, I believe that's how you say his last name. I probably messed it up again. I will get it at some point. He's looked great. Like, could he be a Jordan Poole replacement? Brandon Podjemski, he has shown some flashes. So you want to see what these players look like and maybe think about the fit that they could have on this current roster. Trey Jackson Davis, he figures to potentially get some time as a rookie for this team. Rounded out the show with some players that the Warriors have been linked to in recent days is a reunion with Jermichael Green on the horizon. They still need some size. Jermichael Green gives you some three-point shooting ability. With him and Dario Sharch, that would be two backup bigs who can shoot the three. Jermichael Green, a little bit underwhelming in his lone season with Golden State, but he did sign that really cheap contract last year. Is a player I wouldn't hate if he did come back. A guy who's kind of become an NBA sensation here on these internet streets is Bull Bull, the son of Manute Bull. The Warriors also said to have some interest in him, but the Phoenix Suns, leaders in the clubhouse to land him. He's so long, a lot of starts last year, more than 30 with the Orlando Magic, can also play make a little bit for a big, has a lot of name power. Dwight Howard said a couple of weeks ago he does want to continue playing. You could do worse with him as a backup big in this league, as a guy who can rim run, block some shots, and throw down some dunks on some of those lob plays. Justice Winslow had a couple of good years to start his career with the Miami Heat, but injuries, inconsistencies, never really developed a three-point shot. That's why a former lottery pick has not really been able to stick with the team over the last few years. And then Myers Leonard also signed a deal late last year, I believe with the Milwaukee Bucks, an active center, pretty solid athlete who would fulfill that need for bringing in a little bit of girth and bulk at the center spot for Golden State. So if the Warriors sign any of these players, or if they make any signings in general, of course, we're going to continue to cover that. Only a couple of roster spots left for the dubs, and we'll see which players they want to keep on an NBA contract or a two-way deal following NBA free agency. That's why you subscribe to the show. It's Golden State Warriors today looking to get the 60,000 subscribers. Join the Warriors community here at Chat Sports and answer our last question for today's show. Which player 
do you want the Warriors to sign who is currently available right now? Drop us a name. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you tomorrow here on Warriors Today.